Welcome back guys, we're back again with another tutorial and this time we're going to be going over permission plugins and how to use them and we'll be showing an example of using one. And by permission plugins what I mean is that if somebody isn't an operator or a certain member uh, because you can create groups they're not going to be allowed to use certain permissions. So if I do forward slash game mode you can see already it's going red which means I haven't been given the permission for it. Now if I try and type it in anyway you're going to see that it's actually not going to go through and you're going to be told you don't have access to that command. This can of course prove very handy especially if you want to categorize or put people in groups so you've got maybe like first time users, maybe VIPs and stuff like that and you can add all sorts of different things to this. So we've got ourselves a brand new server and we want to add a permission plugin. However first of all what you will need is something like Essentials which manages um, a lot of stuff in your server and it's very useful for other things if you want to start economy and stuff like that and Vault. Now with these two you can easily install most permission plugins and run them with these and they'll all sort of work together. So first of all if you're starting from brand new just make sure you choose the type of uh, server that you want obviously being it uh, what type of Java ones are going to be doing the Java plugins so Forge, um, sorry Craft Bucket, Paper etc just choose which one you're going to go for we're going to go for Craft Bucket and the latest version then you're just going to head on up and stop your server and head on over to the plugins list on the left and for this case I'm just going to be doing essentials and vault like I said before so if you type in essentials in the search bar you're going to find essential x click on that make sure you're using the right version you can check this using the little chart on the right uh, we're on a 1.16 uh, plus so it's going to be compatible with any of these versions so this one's going to be just fine right once you've enabled that you're going to come back to your plugin list and you're going to go down to Vault. Now it's the same process and like I said before Vault is very good because you can also connect all sorts of economy to it or economy APIs and stuff like that and that will run all the sort of shops um, and economy side of stuff. And then I just headed over to Spigot because they are compatible and uh, I searched Lucky Perm. Come down here and it's Lucky Perms. This is going to be the permission plugin we're just going to be using for this example. Obviously there are the ones that you can use. So we've hit install and we've got all the, all the plugins that we're going to need and we're just going to head back to the server itself. So next step is to actually hit start on your server and start up the server. And to check what plugins you have installed you can just type in the bottom here plugins and press enter. As you can see there we've got three plugins which are the Luck Perms, Vault and Essentials. And if you want to learn more into configuring your plugins and stuff like that, we do have another video. Just check it out on the Seeker Host knowledge base. However, we are now done. So what we can do is we can actually open up our Minecraft server, log into it using the IP and port or a custom domain if we decided to choose one. Now, once we're in your world and if you are brand new to it, you're going to have to OP yourself through the console. To do this, just head on over to the console setting here and then type OP followed by your username. And you can see it's changed from there from default jdog to made jdog as server operator. Now you're able to actually operate your commands and stuff like that on here. And lucky perms as much as you can also configure it. Um, you can change it all in game. It's very easy. It's, this isn't a detailed lucky perms video. So I'm not going to go into the suffix and prefix and stuff like that. Changing colors um, to people's titles. But you can do all of that. You can rank them. Um, however, this is just going to be just to set up groups and then add permissions to them groups. Now if you type LP into the command bar you're going to see lots of different options that pop up here and the ones that we're going to be looking for is the create group just here. Now what you do start in this is everybody starts as default so default's already a group setting however we also want to add a moderator so we're going to add mod. As you can see LP mod was successfully created. Let's say maybe we want to make um, not only a moderator but we want to make an owner one. We can do the same thing again and if we just type that but instead of mod we're just going to type owner and then hit enter. However, it's all well and good making these groups, but we actually want to add the permissions to do that. So to do that, you're going to do forward slash LP, editor, and hit enter. What's that? What that's going to do is going to give you a link, and if you open up your chat bar um, and you click this, it's going to ask you if you're sure you want to open the following website, um, and you're going to click there. Yes. So it will bring you up onto this page here. And by the way, you have to close this down every time because it will open up and refresh a new page if you actually want to do a new, ac a new action. So what we can see here on the left is tracks, groups and users and what we're going to be concentrating on is groups. So as you're going to see here, defaults are already on there and you made the mod and you made the owner. So now what you do is you head on over to default. So usually you tend to program what everybody's going to come into first or what, totally up to you, but that's what I would do. So you come on over here and this page is currently empty because default has absolutely no permissions. You can't even type in forward slash help. 
However, to find and add these permissions, just head down to the bar here, you click it, and it's already going to come up with loads of different um, permissions that you can see right there. And that's a lot of them are going to be essentials. That's why I do suggest always adding that up because it also, you know, adds anything from economy, signboards, um, warps, kits, and stuff like that. So let's say for the default user, I want to set um, essentials warp. So I type in essentials warp and I'm going to click that. So now it's been added to this little bar here and I can keep adding. So if I want to give them the command of help so they can just check out what they're able to do, I can click that. If you want them to check their balance, let's say through the essentials economy, um, or if you have an economy API, you can just hit balance and so on. Now we want to add these three that we've just added there and we're just going to hit add and it's going to add it to the list. This, however, won't be finished until you hit save, but we'll go through that in a minute. Let's say that you want to add one and you've hit on here and you've not found what it is. It won't come up on the bar even if you search it. What you can do is just head on over to um, any of the plugin sites. Let's say if you got it off bucket, you can just go onto there, check out the actual plugin itself. And if you scroll down and under permissions, or it might say permission nodes, it will tell you exactly what to type in. So if you'd uh, downloaded this lag clear plugin um, in the permission nodes, you would type this one here because that's the permission for it. So now you've got all the plugins that you've want um, ready for the default and we're going to allow them to warp, which is I think choosing a walk. And we also want to add set warp. Again, I'm just doing these randomly. These aren't ones that I suggest um, typically myself. That's just completely how you want to run your server. So we've decided that that's going to be the default permissions. Now for our moderator permissions, we maybe want to give them a different game mode. So if we type in essentials game mode, uh, they're now going to be able to operate that and actually change their game mode. Add that to their list and then we go over to owner and for this one we want to give them game mode and we want them to broadcast as an admin let's say. So we're going to click them, they're going to add onto there and we're going to hit add. You can of course before you add them change stuff like the expiry, like you might want it to expire, they can only change their game mode for let's say you know five hours um, and we'll just keep that content uh, value as true and then we've added everything that we want so you know once you finish editing all of these and you want to actually upload it onto your server you just hit save on the right here and it's going to prompt you to copy this command so command copy to the clipboard when you hit that and if you come back onto your game and open up your chat box um, do a control V to paste it and press enter you're going to see all of the stuff that you've just changed has just been changed on the server itself and it loads pretty much instantly you can see all the stuff like uh, the additions that have been deleted or what's changed and um, what's been changed to true or false as well. So now let's say you actually want to add users to this group. Um, you just type in LP editor again, follow the link and then instead of groups, just come down to users. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on myself um, and I'm going to add them to owner group. Once I have added them to the owner group, and of course you can actually change this, so you know you can change the actual date on here. So if you want the owner to only be the owner for like two days, or maybe you might do this for another admin, you can do it for like two days. And what this means up here with the parent groups is that I'm owner, but I also have all the default groups as well. Now once we've done that, we're just going to hit save, same as last time, and we're just going to copy that to the clipboard. And we're going to paste it um, straight back in again with Control and V. And you can see I've now changed uh, my group to group owner. And as you can see, the web editor data was applied for user JDog successfully. And I'm now the group owner, which has been switched to true. Of course, you can do that with the admins as well. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope that's been helpful and you can set up all your permissions now. And don't forget for any more knowledge-based videos, just check out Seekhost and, of course, my channel.